chapter 7 mm -hmm. and then get into chapter 8. Okay. Again, these videos are on that website, so if you need to review, get on there and review them. If you've been in class, watch them again. Yeah. I don't know the dates You just have to look through them. <laughs> Best I could do. At least they're on it. Okay, so let's finish up our last uh, elimination reaction. Is, is that a base then comes in, whatever it is, attacks the beta hydrogen, forms the double bond, and kicks off the water. Okay. So you can see that a side product here is water. So since water leaves in the reaction, since we lose water, that's why it's called a dehydration. Okay, just like you, if you lose water, 
from your body, you become dehydrated to some extent. Now, it doesn't mean you start forming double bonds in your body, okay? You just lose water, okay? But when a alcohol, when it loses water, it always forms this double bond, okay? cyclohexene starts forming, you'll notice it because the lab just really starts smelling really bad. Okay? And that's why if you guys do this, make sure you tell George or whoever your instructor is that you want to do it in the hood so you don't breathe that stuff. It's not good. Okay. So any questions on the dehydration of alcohols. Okay. Well, that finishes up chapter 7. alkenes form, okay, they form through what? Elimination reactions, okay. Now we want to look at how these things react, okay. So chapter 8 is going to be filled with a bunch of reactions, okay. So if you have index cards, okay, you want to start bringing those, okay, so you can start writing these things down. So let's get a picture of what we're going to look at here. <coughs> Let's just make up a molecule here that has X and Y on there, <coughs> wherever they are. Okay. The reactions we've been looking at have been elimination reactions where we eliminated X, Y. And formed our double bond. Okay. But what we want to do in this chapter is do the reverse. We want to add X, Y across the double bond to get this back over here. So what kind of reactions do you think we're going to call these? Addition reactions. Addition reactions. Alkene reactions are called addition reactions. Okay. So any questions on the map that we're going to follow here? Okay. We'll see these things are very, very easy. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and 
look at, it started with addition reactions. two p orbitals that are overlapping side lengths. Okay. And remember in each p orbital you have one electron. Okay. So these two electrons add up to make this one bond here. And in the middle, this thing was what the sigma bond. Okay. So you get the pi bond and the sigma bond for the double bond. Well, note too that these pi electrons of these p orbitals, they're a little bit further away from the carbon nucleus. Okay, so they're not held as tight. Okay, so these pi electrons here, we could say are loose. Loose. They are loosely held. Okay. And since they're kind of loose, they have the ability to be donated. If they have the ability to be donated, what can they act as? They can act as a base. They can act as a base. This is the key thing you want to remember when you see a double bond, is that it can act as a base. If something can act as a base, <coughs> what do we say it usually has on it? A lone pair. A lone pair. So this is what I want you to do anytime you see a double bond, is come to it and draw a gigantic lone pair a gigantic lone pair so that you know it's going to act as a base. Okay? Any questions on that? Well, let's take it to the next step and do a little reaction with it. can act as a base, let's bring in an acid. Makes sense? That's what I want to react with, an acid. Okay. So here, let's come back again and draw our gigantic lone pair here. Base and acid. So where's that gigantic lone pair? going to attack? What part of it? 
the hydrogen, delta plus. Okay. So we can show a little mechanism there and kick off that chlorine. hydrogen going to attach itself to? Okay. Well, here's how you want to view that. Let's pretend this red pen is this gigantic lone pair. Okay. So what you can envision is it's going to act as a pivot point on one of the carbons. Okay. So it pivots up and it's going to grab that hydrogen. All right, so I don't care which carbon, let's just put the hydrogen, say, on this one, like that, okay? So this bond here was the pi electrons, and now it's a sigma bond to that hydrogen. Well, if you look, this carbon here lost this one electron, didn't it? So what kind of charge will be on that carbon? A positive charge. Okay. So what we get in addition reactions is a carbocation intermediate. Okay. So a carbocation always forms in the first step. CL minus got kicked off. Where do you think it's going to react? To the positive charge. See how hydrogen and chlorine, X and Y, have added across the double bond. So that's our addition product. How simple that is. Okay? So it's called electrophilic addition reactions because this thing we're adding here, delta plus, is the electrophile. big deal. All you have to remember is that these things are called addition reactions. Okay. I just need an electrophile to get it going. Any questions on that mechanism? <coughs> All we're going to do next is a real molecule. example choose cyclohexene since we found out how to form that by dehydration. And let's react with HCl. Okay. So here I can draw my 
gigantic lone pair and attack. matter which carbon gets the hydrogen. I just know whichever one I choose, the other one gets the positive charge. So then my chlorine Cl minus attacks, and I get my addition product. Okay, any questions on that? So you can see it doesn't matter if the chlorine went down here, it would still be called chlorocyclohexane. Remember, same name means same molecule. Any questions on that? Okay. <clears throat> well, let's look at another one of these reactions. Look at this alkene. <coughs> and react that with HCl. Okay. So again, I come over and draw my gigantic long pair. I attack the hydrogen and kick off the chlorine. Okay. Well, if I do that, now I have a little something new. Now, this carbon this carbon are different, aren't they? That's a CH2, that's a CH. So now I'm going to look at two possibilities. Let's put the hydrogen on the middle carbon. Which would make the end carbon get the positive charge. Okay? And then let's look at the other case where the end carbon gets the hydrogen. Which would give the middle carbon the positive charge. two different carbocation intermediates. Okay. So if I can get two different intermediates, then my Cl minus could react with both of them to give me a different product, couldn't it? So if it reacts with the first one, second one, I get two chloropropane. <clears throat> so 
I get two different products this time. Well, do you remember if I get two different products, what question do I want to ask? Which one is the major, major product? And which one is the minor? Okay. Any ideas what the major product might be? Okay, so I hear some different answers. Let's see if we can figure it out. How are we going to figure it out? <coughs> I'm not going to figure it out here. Make sure you follow me here. Make sure you're looking up here. Look up here. <laughs> we don't figure it out on this level. We figure it out on this level. What kind of carbocation is that? Primary. <coughs> Primary. What kind is that? Secondary. Secondary. Which one's more stable? Secondary. Secondary. So which carbocation do you think forms more? The secondary. Okay. And so which product do you think forms more? This one down here. I hope you just follow what I said. See people laughing. So this one down here will be the major product, and this one here is the minor product. So why is that the major product? Because its carbocation was more stable, and so it'll form more. Remember thermodynamics. This one was less stable, so it'll form less, so this product will form less than that one. Okay. Pretty easy. Well, it's so easy that somebody got their name associated with it. It's what's called Markovnikov's rule. Very important rule that I'll state for you two times, so you better get it down. If you don't, it's in your phone. Okay. It's a very important rule. There's two important rules in this class. One was Zaitsev's rule. The second one is Markovnikov's rule. So what is Markovnikov's rule? You could already state it. We already have. Let's do it again. Here we go. Markovnikov's rule says that in addition reactions to a pi bond, The major product comes from the more stable carbocation intermediate. Here it is the second time. Markovnikov's rule says that in addition reactions to a pi bond, the major product comes from the more stable carbocation intermediate. Okay, that if you want to add on, because the more stable carbocation intermediate forms more. Okay. 
So make sure if I ask this on the exam that you don't say because this product is more stable. No. This product is no more stable than that product. It deals with what? The carbocations. That's more stable. Okay. Any questions? Our Kovnikov's rule. Very important. Okay, so let me give you one and see if you can do it. Use what we did as a model. Are you getting it? Yeah. Good. Good. 
get it, Pink? Stand back, let everybody see that. Okay, what would you guys like to see in addition? Some arrows. Show me some arrows. What would we say the first thing to do? Yeah, draw it, Jackie. It's not on the board. There we go. And then, second step, show the. Oh. What, what else do you want to see? BR minus. Where's the BR minus up there? Where's it go? Right here. Right here. Fine. Don't race it. Yeah. Now attack the bottom. Okay. Good. Now go down to the second one. see something she just a little bit weak on there something needs to be straightened up any one of these steps what didn't she quite draw correctly which, which part somebody come up here and show me Here and show. Say, get on the camera. Show <laughs> <laughs> Manet will come up. Uh, I think that uh, speaking of how it's coming from. Oh, somebody else about to get up. Sorry. Uh -huh. no, she's too embarrassed. Yeah. I mean, are you talking about this right here? It's coming from the bottom. Right. The electron. Right. Use the eraser. Yeah. 
something like that on the next exam, whatever that is. I'll give you things to react for all the two intermediates, the two products, and explain using Markovnikov's rule why that's the major. What kind of carbocation was that? Tertiary. What's that? Secondary. Secondary. So the tertiary is more more stable than the secondary. Okay. So that's Markovnikov's rule. Okay. So in the chapter, you'll have more problems in the chapter. Okay, on page three, three, three. Okay. Practice those as they're just like this one here. Okay. So it doesn't matter if I use HBR or HCl or HI. Okay. And all we're going to do the rest of this chapter are different X, Y's here. Okay. So make sure you bring your note cards so you can start listing these things off. We'll see you next time.